All right, guys, I'm Nicolette, and today Brian and I are here with Amran and Sager to talk about designing safer products in an IoT world. So not only does the IoT keep us connected and keep plenty of data flowing, but it also keeps us safe in many ways, right? Sensors are now used in applications such as healthcare, industrial transportation, agriculture, building automation, and transportation, just to name a few. Yeah. So what do we need to know in order to keep the world safe as we design IoT products? Well, we're here with Carrie Horan, Product Manager, Sensors and Modules at Omron Electronic Components, and Pam Berrigan, Supplier Product and Marketing Manager at Sager Electronics, to learn more about current design challenges, how sensors actually keep us safe and proactive, restrictions and compliances, as well as what the future might hold for us as we collect all of this data. So thank you so much, both of you, for joining us today. We do appreciate your time. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. All right. So let's right. dive in. Carrie, why don't you kick us off? Um, so I want to phrase this question two ways. I've got Carrie's perspective and Pam's perspective. All right. Um, why don't we talk about the current state of IoT safety? So what are engineers up against when they're designing these IoT products? And Pam, I'd love for you to follow that with what you're hearing from the Sager sales team. With sensing technology and especially with IoT, one of the biggest things that a lot of engineers and product designers are looking for is not only how to collect the data specifically from the sensors that are working in their various different projects, but how to collect the data and have it work all uh, simultaneously with their existing technology. And with all of that data that's coming in together, it can be very overwhelming um, how operators and how engineers are able to read the data and utilize it properly. So with the IoT space, uh, what we'd really like to do is get all of that data that's coming in, all of that very useful data, uh, and really help it be properly utilized to really take different projects to the next level. I think one of the biggest challenges that we found with sensing technology is that sensors aren't necessarily something that are going to be replacing existing technology, but it really can drastically alter how different products work. Um, so not only is the challenge getting the sensor to cooperate with the uh, actual older technology that's being that's currently being used, mm -hmm. but um, ultimately with IoT technology, what we're really looking for is uh, the best way that we can get all of the data that's being collected by all of the sensors and all of the technology uh, that's being collected and make it so it's easily accessible and readable for engineers, operators, and anybody else who is best using this, these various different technologies and projects. And Pam, what about you? What are the salespeople hearing when they're well, out there bringing the product? Even, the last two and a half years have been very trying for our field sales team Getting in front of engineers has been very difficult. And when it does occur, it's on a virtual platform. But we see that changing. We see engineers accepting our um, field team into their offices um, to do face-to-face -face design work. Um, we work very closely with the Armon field team and the technical support team. So it's nice to see things going back to the way they used to be with the release of all this new IoT product the time is right to get back into um, the back room with the engineers to work on the design hands-on. So I have a question. How does sensors help us get ahead of the problem rather than always being reactive to what's going on in, in IoT? Uh, that's, I mean, that's an excellent question. And honestly, that's really the goal of what our sensors are doing is to get ahead of the problem. Uh, one of the biggest challenges that we've been seeing in the workforce is downtime that comes from events that uh, internally we like to call irregular events and or irregular event zero. Um, those that is a specific event that really can shut down uh, workforce and can shut down production. Those can be machine breakdowns. Those can be health and safety issues. Um, there are a lot of things that can really slow things down, and then a lot of workforce and a lot of energy has to be redirected into fixing the issue and then now we're a couple of steps back due to these events that take place the sensors that we're designing especially right now with with the developments that we're working on with omron are ones that are looking for the subtle indicators that can show when these uh, events may take place 
Uh, for example, with larger machines, uh, those breakdowns don't just happen all of a sudden. Um, in many cases, there are little indicators that can show that something may be a little bit amiss. Maybe a part becomes slightly loose and the vibration is a little bit heavier. Um, with many of us that are operating, I mean, in our cars, if they start making a little bit of noise, we may drive it for a little longer without really thinking about it because those subtle changes don't really mean that much to us until the breakdown actually happens. When the sensors can detect that early on, they can send those indicators that uh, help operators and help manufacturers uh, see a problem before it really occurs and before it becomes uh, too much of an issue. All right, so we always got to listen to those warning signals that our cars give us. <laughs> so I'm getting out of that. Well, well, with the sensors now, we don't really have <laughs> to be listening to broken, The sensors right? are now going to be showing yeah. us exactly what's going right, on. Right, right. When the sensor these tells sensors, us. Could, right. These sensors can potentially save our customers millions of dollars. Downtime on machinery is very expensive. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the different application areas, though, are there kind of differences in designing for safety? Like, how does that work? Um, it, it, it can be very different. I mean, it really depends on the application. There are so many different factors that can uh, really affect how um, a machine or how an environment is, is going to be determined safe or unsafe. Um, so there are a lot of factors we really look at when it comes to uh, how things are operating and how things are operating well. Um, it is, you know, the, 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 the safety and design, it, it really just comes down to, we talk a lot with the designers, we talk a lot with customers, and we talk a lot with people who are just involved in the industry of what are some common problem areas that you see? And what is something, if you had a magic wand and could wave it, what is something that you wish you didn't have to spend so much time, effort, and money mm -hmm. trying to fix and maintain? And from that, we can see what sort of magic wand in our sensors we can we can help to to make that uh, a little bit easier. What about healthcare? These days, technology is connecting us more than ever to our own healthcare and allowing professionals to better monitor us. Um, are there any particular sensor developments making waves in this space? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Omron has uh, actually a healthcare division where we do a lot of focus on some healthcare applications such as blood pressure monitors and watches to help give that basic health info. Those are already on the market and are incredibly popular with, within our, our company. Um, from our side, some developments that we're making that are very exciting are for patient monitoring, particularly for elderly care and those who may be sick or injured. Uh, we have a time of flight sensor that we have released. Um, this is something that uh, has typically really been designed for um, industrial applications with uh, mobile robot navigation systems. Uh, however, we've actually found a great way to utilize it in body tracking movement. Uh, we found that the sensor in its way to um, detect distance over actual images can help render a complete 3D space. And from that, we've built on it our human pose estimation software that actually can track and detect human movement and skeletal movement as they're moving across, uh, moving around a room, as they're sitting up in bed, as they're, you know, navigating a certain space and even alerting when they fall. With health Sorry? So the vision is the vision to monitor the elderly even more closely than let's say kind of just that button that tells you when someone falls. How how is I'm so excited about this. This sounds cool. Yeah, absolutely. So the so the button obviously you know has to be pushed and and right. you know some people aren't always able going to aren't always going to be able to reach it in time and mm -hmm. that can cause some delays. Um, on the other side of it, video surveillance can be a little bit invasive. Uh, not everybody is as comfortable having a security camera, especially with elderly. I mean, you are now with uh, nursing care, you're now having a camera basically in your bedroom. And not a lot of people really want that. Yeah. With this sensor, it's not actually collecting any image data. So there's no actual footage that's being collected here. Um, but what it can do is, uh, as long as there's a person who's uh, even just partly visible uh, from the sensor field of view, it's able to sort of build that skeletal system, mm -hmm. detect the people, and then 
uh, based on the data that can be collected, you can see what it is, how it is when a normal person is walking um, and when they may be stumbling or when they have fallen. Uh, we can see when a person is upright and when they've hit the ground. And so from there, data can immediately be sent automatically without somebody having to reach to hit the button or somebody having to notice them and call for help. Well, that's 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 interesting. I mean, that could be used in so many different yeah. applications. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you could think about like even like PT and monitoring the way someone's mm -hmm. sitting up or even like for athletes, right? You know, are they in the correct body position to do whatever that, that sport is that i mean that's really actually cool yeah. stuff right there yeah absolutely i mean there's a lot there's a lot of applications that we can go with it and like i said we started and we really developed this technology um for uh the industrial space with automated mobile robots but we've soon found the other uses of it especially with this human pose estimation technology and you know as you indicate this is just the beginning of of what we can do with it um, PT and uh, exercise equipment is is certainly a, a great next step for us as we really improve on the technology. No, so here's a question, right? We talk about, you know, we talked about robotics. So I'm assuming because it's skeletal, you're looking at like Android type robotics. Can you reconfigure it to say like this robot is, you know, it's not like a human form and mm. actually um, go and go, okay, I can monitor what this robot's doing or I can monitor what a dog is doing or whatever the case right, is, right. something that's outside of the, the, the human form? Um, at this point, at this point, not yet. It's, it's something that can certainly be out there. Uh, the human form is, is something that is, you know, very universal mm -hmm. with, with how people are, are, are standing and moving, uh, mm -hmm. at least, at least in most cases. But as we get into other forms of ro robots and, and mm -hmm. pets and animals, you know, there's, there's more, uh, there's more development that needs to come on that side. So, um, yeah, there, there's a lot that we can really do with it. And, and with the robots using it for navigation, uh, we have already found ways that it can at least uh, detect objects that are low to the ground or high up in the air or coming in from the side so that the robot that's using it can navigate around that space. So beyond the actual detecting of the skeletal system, it can still detect if an object is close to it or right. far away from it and if they can steer around and find an alternate route. Very, very cool. Very cool stuff. But, you know, you were talking about industrial robotics, which reminds me a little bit about some of the issues that happen in industrial workplaces. But mm -hmm. I mean, what about workplace safety in general? Obviously, mm -hmm. my first thought is, is, you know, warehousing and factories and, you know, more mm -hmm. industrial setting. But what are what are your thoughts on that? How are these sensors kind of playing a role in workplace safety across the board? Um, sure. So we actually have some existing technology in our environment sensor um, that we had released a number of years ago to serve that very purpose. Um, this is a small multi-sensor component that's collecting all of this different data, temperature, humidity, light, barometric pressure, UV levels, um, sort of an all-encompassing feature to get all of this different sensor information uh, and collecting this data. And using it, we found that there are, of course, very similar factors in what really makes a workplace safe and comfortable uh, for people as they're coming in and out of the office. Not only just for basic office space where you want to make sure that people aren't too hot or too humid or it's, or it's too cold, um, but also getting into the industrial space. Um, a lot of times, especially in places with a lot of machinery, you're getting a lot of uh, a lot of noise level that can also be very unhealth unhealthy for for workers who are there for an extended period of time. So, jumping off of that existing technology, we're looking to develop newer modules that can really get not only the environmental conditions that will affect the worker safety, but also get a lot of other factors that can. Um, influence how the machines are running smoothly with electrical current, with vibration data, looking for leak detection to make sure that um, maybe servers aren't, aren't uh, server rooms aren't experiencing any leaks or high humidity. Um, so we're kind of building off of the technology that we've got um, to really make something that is incredibly useful for room monitoring applications and safety monitoring applications for all different types of environments. So mentioned a lot about um some of the things that actually have to do with 
building monitoring, right? You know, mm-hmm. temperatures and things like that. So what's, what's being done in the sensor space for building monitoring? Uh, so with building monitoring, that really kind of um, gets into that. When we get into basic applications, it really kind of gets into um, normal operating office spaces and, and looking at the what the conditions are in different rooms and different uh, common spaces that people are going to be operating in. Um, again, that comes down to the comfort level when it comes to making sure that, you know, areas aren't too uh too hot or too cold or, or there's there's not too many um uh toxic gases that may be in the air i think toxic gases is is a, is a big thing that that a lot of people are looking for especially as we get into um different machines that can leak uh refrigerants or or radon detection um but also we found that there are especially in big spaces and especially in big common spaces which is uh becoming increasingly more um, common as we uh, start changing the workforce and a lot of people are working from home or using shared office spaces. Uh, we found that uh, one of the big uses for it is looking at noise level. Um, in big areas where there's a lot of shared spaces, maybe you don't have a specific desk or you don't have a specific office where you're going to be working, you might want a spot where you can take a meeting that's going to be a little bit quieter, um, a little bit away from the action. And using some of the sensing technology beyond people you know, checking in and, and indicating exactly where they are, you can use these sensors to kind of estimate, all right, where are some places where there's not a lot of activity going on? I don't think I'm going to be disturbed and I can really uh, focus on this project or, or go onto a call or um, do something that's a little bit away from everybody else. Um, that's something that can be really important with, with building monitoring um, as well. Um, Beyond that, um, there are, of course, all of the different machines that help keep a building operational. Mm -hmm. Um, HVAC, um, air handling equipment, elevators and escalators for transport. um, All of these are also different machines that eventually at some point will break down. Eventually at some point um, will have some wear and tear that might make things a little bit uh, unsafe for people. So we are also developing uh, building monitoring solutions that, um, again, similar to looking at the vibration and looking at the uh, machine performance, um, making sure that these uh, devices are operating properly as well. Because beyond just, you know, a machine shutting down and and cutting off production, if air handling equipment goes down or if um, the elevators and escalators stop working, that can also uh, really hinder things as well as, as, as people are moving around uh, different spaces. So um, there's a couple of different sensors that we have for, for building safety and room safety. So Carrie, do you have any specific examples of some situations where these sensors are keeping us safe? I know you mentioned a couple when we chatted a few weeks sure. ago. Yeah, one, one big one that, that we have and that, that we're pretty excited to work on the development for um, we have uh, gotten a lot of people who are requesting um, some sensor to help detect various different toxic gases that, that may come into the air, um, particularly when it comes to air handling equipment and refrigerants that may potentially leak Freon and refrigerant gases that can be um, incredibly dangerous, especially even in just small amounts. Um, so what we've been doing is we've been doing a lot of research on looking at some of these toxic gases that can pose risks and that are a lot more common than we think. You don't have to be um, on a machine floor or really into the construction to potentially be exposed uh, to um, these different um, toxic gases that may that may leak into the air. Um, radon and Freon are both big ones that, that we're working on. So our engineers are doing a lot of work in looking at ways that we can develop uh, more modern solutions to uh, address these specific concerns. There are similar products like this that, that do exist that are, um, that aren't, <clears throat> I'll take that back from there. Yeah. <clears throat> there are similar products that, there are products that do exist currently that that serve that purpose, but we really want to take that into the modern age, especially with IoT space. 
Um, we have, there are radon detectors and radon test kits out there that you have to purchase separately and put out and, and wait a few months to really see how the radon is affecting you, for example. But with different sensor technology that we can develop, especially ones that work in the IoT space, you won't have to worry about going out and getting different equipment depending on uh, certain reactions that you might be feeling or certain um, environment characteristics that you might have noticed. This can be something that's always operating in the background and something that can alert you uh, before you're even ready to, to take a closer look. So that can be really important in uh, nipping problems like that in the bud. So are there any restrictions or compliances that exist mm -hmm. and that sensors actually assist with, such as maybe like OSHA, you know, or things like that? So a lot of our sensors are, 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 of course, working to help make sure that uh, these different areas are safe and are obviously helping with, with OSHA standards. Um, one of the big challenges that we have with our sensing technology is, is another aspect of, of some of our products that we're developing is ones that are touchless. Um, touchless sensors are, are a big market. Uh, definitely kicked off, uh, especially at the start of COVID, when when people were a lot more cautious about touching different surfaces, especially ones that, you know, many different people of the public are going to be are going to be touching. Uh, but one of the big challenges with it is is not not really OSHA, but but fitting with ADA compliances. Um, ADA compliances, Americans with Disabilities Act, make it um, somewhat of a challenge to get in some of that touchless technology because it's not going to be as feasible for those who may be visually impaired. Um, so that is, of course, something that we're always keeping in mind, um, especially with OSHA. You know, we want to make sure that some of these sensors make it a lot easier to deal with with OSHA standards. Uh, you won't have to worry about uh, as much about um, taking these times to do regular inspections if we have sensors that are going to be giving you that information right away. You can go ahead and, and check on them quickly without having to take the time to make sure that you're meeting those OSHA standards. Um, so of course we are always thinking about that, but, but the challenges are always there to um, make that sensor technology compatible with those standards. So do customers actually ask for help with the visualization of all the data that's being collected from all these sensors? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We have, you know, a lot of our sensors do just put out the raw data. Um, and a lot of our sensors actually do uh, have that great visualization for customers. And I think uh, for the most part, that visualization can be incredibly helpful. Um, I spoke a little bit about our time of flight sensor with healthcare monitoring, and that basically gives a complete visualization of the scene that's in front and especially with the human pose estimation, you actually see the skeletal figure over the body that's going to be walking across the screen. Um, so we do have that question a lot. But at this point, we are so familiar with the need for that from a lot of people. Not everybody is going to be able to look at raw data, numbers going down a screen and be able to say, all right, this is that way and I know what to do here. So we appreciate the fact that some people aren't always going to have that uh, knowledge readily available. So what we love to do is when we uh, are best able to get that visualization out standard and get that software out for people so that they're able to easily visualize the data that these sensors are giving them. So Pam, I, I know Sager does a lot to support Omron on its mission to enhance safety, you know, in this IoT world. And I, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what you guys are doing over there to support the Omron mission. Sure. Sager and Omron have enjoyed a very long, successful partnership. Our um, field sales are located all throughout North America, and they are um, working directly with the Omron local teams and their technical support to work with the engineers to design in this product and to find the solutions for them. Um, in addition, um, Sager has an excellent track record in these customer applications and markets that Carrie described here. So we can support not only with the sensors, but all the products that are offered from um, Armron. In addition to that, here at corporate, 
I'm working to make sure that these new products are on the shelf, that they're available for the customers during this design and process. And um, marketing support has become so important during COVID. And even as we're doing face-to-face, -face, I think um, it's nice to have some marketing documentation. So um, that will allow us to support the design process and help the Omron and Sager team um, get fast acceptance of these IoT enabled product because that's important as well. You know, we know that Sager does a lot of value add for its suppliers and I'm sure the same is true here for Omron. Uh, would you be able to share with us some of uh, the value add stuff you do for Omron? Yes, we do offer additional value added services in addition to the customization of products that Omron offers. Sager has the ability to add wire leads, connectors to these senses. Uh, Sager has a value-added facility in Texas. And within this state-of-the-art facility, we can offer this value-added customization with our design and production capacity and team there. Um, and actually, we're expanding that facility shortly. Um, we also have... Um, the ability to support the customer in terms of the batteries needed, the battery powered applications for these sensors. We have a battery solution center located out in Illinois. Um, so these are all uh, solutions that we can provide to the customer to enhance the design of these IoT sensor products. So one final question, we're collecting all this information via these sensors. What are people going to start doing with all this data years into the future, right? How is that going to propel safety moving forward? You're getting futuristic on us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, the answer to that is really limitless. Uh, data right now is some of the most valuable information that people can really get. Um, data on uh, how an environment looked 10 years ago versus now, um, what the how the environment's changing, how the machine operation is changing, how the, uh, the workplace environment's changing. Um, there's a lot of really, really great information that you that you can get from that. And so when it comes down to what can somebody do with all that information, I mean, it really is just limited by what their imagination is and what they really want to do with it. Mm. Um, I think it can be incredibly valuable for people to um, look at how things and how people and how environments have behaved uh, from year to year. And especially if they're looking to make changes, that can be incredibly valuable because then you can really tackle where some of those changes are going to best be implemented and what are the causes and what are the main factors of the things that are having some maybe negative effects and looking at that data over the years and looking at that data uh you know as you implement new things and how that data changes can be incredibly valuable for people well carrie pam thank you so much for joining us today we would love it if you could tell us where we can learn more about Amran's ton of sensors that you guys are working on over there and Pam as well, where we can find out more about these sensors on Sager. Uh, sure. So our website components.omron.com has plenty of information on all of our new and existing sensor technology. There's also plenty of information on the other products that we have to offer, including our switches, connectors, and power relays. And then our YouTube channel, we have been putting out a lot of videos recently on um, all of our new products that we've released and even are previewing a lot of our newer products that we have under development. A lot of really exciting stuff. Uh, myself and a couple of my colleagues are putting out some really, really great informational material on teaching how our current products work and a lot of their advantages, but also showcasing what we have coming up in the future. And on Sega.com within the Omron page on our site, we highlight all these new products released from Omron, as well as the full product offering by Omron. We also have a way that you could reach out and get in touch with a local salesperson that could provide you with additional information. Thanks again, guys. Absolutely. Thanks, Thank you.